Congratulations. Congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2021 for achieving this milestone. And congratulations to the families, friends, and faculty who got them here. It is my privilege to join you in celebrating the achievements of these talented graduates in international relations. While this celebration might be virtual, our joy in this moment is very real. The 83 international relations students graduating today are receiving their degrees from one of the very best undergraduate international relations programs in the whole country and the largest interdisciplinary program at the college. 18 of these students have divided their time between Williamsburg and St. Andrews University in Edinburgh, Scotland to graduate with a joint degree. All of these students have taken many courses in economics, government, history, sociology, and modern languages to explore the interactions among states, markets, and non-state actors, such as international organizations, multinational corporations, and terrorist networks. Even under these very difficult conditions, they found ways to make a contribution in the world. They are William & Mary students after all. They have combined their classroom experiences with collaborative student faculty research projects. And here I reference an alphabet soup of acronyms, it per trip, PIPS, CAD, IGNITE, the SSRMC, VIPCAT, STAIR Lab, the ABC project and A data, among others. Our majors have then presented their work at national and international conferences and even authored or co-authored scholarly articles. And they have interned even if virtually, with nonprofits, government agencies, law offices, and private firms. And they've served their country in the military and prepared themselves to be commissioned for military service after graduation. All of these students have thrown themselves into their studies. Many have also poured their hearts into the International Relations Club, Model United Nations, and The Monitor, a student-run international relations journal. And their efforts and accomplishments have prepared them for careers in intelligence, development, business, law, national security, and many other fields. And the world needs them. Seeing the way these students have spent the last four years debating tough issues inside and outside of the classroom while respecting each other's perspectives and the norms of civil discourse, seeing the care that they've shown each other in their community tells us that they're gonna live lives of service, lives devoted to the pursuit of knowledge and lives devoted to helping others. And that in living those lives, they literally will change the world. We, their faculty, are ridiculously proud of them and their many accomplishments. And we really do look forward to the world that they will create. Congratulations, International Relations Class of 2021. At this point in our program, we will move to the presentation of awards. The first award is the International Relations Award for Excellence. This award is given to a graduating senior majoring in international relations who has excelled in the classroom, conducted individual research, and who demonstrates leadership skills and potential. It is my pleasure to announce that the first recipient is John Kaner. Professor Susan Peterson will now speak about John's record of excellence at William & Mary. It is my pleasure to present the International Relations Award for Excellence to John Kaner. This award recognizes outstanding achievement in the discipline of international relations. It is given to a graduating senior who has excelled in the classroom, has conducted individual research, and who demonstrates leadership skills and potential. There is no doubt that John Kaner has excelled in the classroom. Despite completing one of the most complex and interdisciplinary majors at the college, John is graduating in just three years with a perfect 4.0 GPA. I first met John when he enrolled in my US foreign policy class. When I would ask a question or open the class to discussion, John would quietly look around to see if anyone else wanted to speak before raising his own hand and asking a challenging question or making an insightful comment that revealed that he had read not only the 30 or 40 pages I had assigned on a topic, but the entire book from which those pages were assigned. 
In the classroom and later in his honors thesis, John consistently asked the toughest and most interesting questions I have ever received from a student. And he often answered them. John's achievements in the classroom have been recognized in numerous ways. A newly elected member of Phi Beta Kappa, John is graduating with honors in international relations. He also has recently select, he was recently selected as the winner of the Lord Botetourt Medal, which is presented at commencement each year to the graduating senior who has most distinguished himself in scholarship during his time at William and Mary. John's academic achievements are all the more remarkable when we consider the breadth of his intellectual curiosity and academic achievement. In addition to studying international relations, John has taken numerous philosophy courses and consumes philosophy texts at an impressive rate. Perhaps most remarkably, given his many academic pursuits, John is an accomplished violinist. In fact, he long planned to attend a music conservatory. As a senior in high school, John told me, he woke up one morning and decided that he loved ideas and the life of the mind too much to forego a liberal arts education. And William and Mary is a far better place for his decision. The International Relations Award for Excellence recognizes outstanding achievement in research. John thrives on research. He has written numerous essays and research papers, sometimes for the sole reason that he was interested in a topic. But John's most impressive piece of research has been his honors thesis, using Hegelian philosophy to explain change in the international system. Working with, the, with John on the thesis has been a true pleasure. He thinks like a scholar. In fact, at a very early stage in his career, John Kaner already is a mature scholar. It's hard to miss his sense of wonder when he unravels a complex problem and the humility with which he approaches his research. John is unafraid of taking intellectual risks. We wish John the best as he leaves for Oxford University where he will pursue a PhD in international relations. I will greatly miss our conversations about Hegel and IR. Congra congratulations, John, and best wishes for a brilliant future. The second recipient of the International Relations Award for Excellence is Morgan Pincombe. And Professor Amy Cork will speak on Morgan's outstanding achievements at the college. I am pleased to present the International Relations Award for Excellence to Morgan Pincombe. Put simply, Morgan is exceptional. She is an outstanding student whose intellectual creativity truly embodies the interdisciplinary excellence to which the International Relations Program aspires. Faculty across numerous disciplines agree, Morgan is a remarkable student. She is impressively dedicated and disciplined, and her written work is highly analytical, original, and crisply written. As one example, in an upper level government course, Morgan wrote a notable piece of policy analysis that took on the question of whether and how the United States should adjust its relationship with the World Health Organization in the wake of the pandemic. The professor noted that the paper could easily have been mistaken for work produced by a professional at a national security think tank. Indeed, Morgan's analytical ability and superb research and writing skills have opened many opportunities for her to pursue research across multiple disciplines. Morgan was selected as a research fellow with the prestigious project on international peace and security, during which she has developed policy recommendations to address China's unequal port treaties and fishing contracts with states on the Gulf of Guinea. Her innovative proposals incorporated interdisciplinary insights, including tactics used by China to emerge from its own century of humiliation. Morgan was also named a research affiliate with the Sociology Department's Social Justice Policy Initiative. In this capacity, Morgan co-authored an article manuscript on the historical construction of food deserts in James City County with particular attention to the interplay between US war mobilization and the dispossession of black landowners. Morgan will present this paper at the annual meetings of the American Sociological Association in August, and we will submit it to a peer reviewed journal this summer. Finally, Morgan has also demonstrated leadership in setting research agendas. 
As a James Monroe scholar, Morgan initiated a collaboration with Professor Dolan in kinesiology to understand how epidemiological results of containment and closure measures during the pandemic varied across 113 countries. Their findings indicate that failure to account for different economic realities led to contextually inappropriate policy responses that may exacerbate poverty and cause unnecessary death. This important research has just been published in Health Policy and Planning, a premier scientific journal. In just these few examples of Morgan's phenomenal achievements, it is clear that she is an incredibly bright, motivated, and talented scholar with top-notch ideas and a scholar who wants to make a true difference in the world. It is my great honor to present Morgan with the International Relations Award of Excellence. Two international relations majors have also been awarded the Koenig Nemo Foreign Service Award. This award is made each year to a senior from any major who hopes to pursue a career in foreign service with a government agency such as the Department of State. The recipient is selected on the basis of commitment to foreign service, academic excellence, leadership qualities, and interest in promoting international understanding. Professor Michael Butler will present the award to the first recipient, Gillis Harris. Hello, I'm Michael Butler from the History Department, and I'm delighted that Professor Oakes has asked me to explain why Gillis Harris one of my former students has won the 2021 Koenig Nemo Award for students who aspire to a career in the Foreign Service. Gillis was one of the very best students I taught here in William & Mary. He excelled in both my lecture course on great power politics and my capstone seminar in the international politics of the 1920s. Gillis was a student who was able to understand sophisticated historical concepts and apply them to the international events of today. His capstone seminar paper on the impact of the Japanese American uh, uh, immigration dispute in the 1920s on the international politics of that period was thoughtful, well-researched and very well-written. And even more impressive by the fact that it took place within the context of uh, William and Mary's 2020 COVID restrictions, which closed Swim Library and drastically reduced his access to relevant archives. I have, uh, during my 30 year foreign service career, I mentored and supervised many young foreign service officers. Gillis' skill set would compare very, very well with any of them. He's thoughtful, first rate inter intellect, dedicated, a hard worker with the all too rare talent of knowing how to listen. He'll make a great foreign service officer. So Gillis, congratulations on the award. Best of luck as you continue your study and embark on a long career of, of uh, government service. Professor Dan Maliniak will present the award to the second recipient, Emmeline Walker. The Koenig Nemo Foreign Service Award is made to a graduating senior um, who hopes to pursue a career in foreign service with a government agency such as the Department of State. Uh, the recipient is selected on the basis of commitment to foreign service, academic excellence, leadership qualities, and interest in promoting international understanding. And I can say, having known uh, uh, Emmeline for uh, many years at this point, that she uh, excels in all of these areas. Um, Emmeline is incredibly bright and talented. She took my IPE course in her sophomore year. The class is a really challenging one where advanced economic concepts meet cutting edge political science work. The lectures are based on the state of the art in both fields, which is often daunting to students when they think about participating or when they take exams. But Emmeline did well to make sure that my expectations, albeit too high, were still met and succeeded. She participated at a high level, answered the tough questions, connected uh, high level themes from economics and politics together. And in particular, I remember her final paper, which was an excellent analysis of the political economy of Cuba. Um, during that semester, Emily reached out to me about doing some research. She had some particular interest uh, in some research I was doing related to the uh, environmental politics and climate. 
Uh, Professor Harish and I had actually just brought a postdoc, uh, Yana, Dr. Yana Jin, um, from, from Beijing to work on us uh, with us um, on a number of joint projects related to this very concept. Emmeline ended up joining a research team, putting her impressive quantitative skills to work, as well as uh, her excellent management skills. Um, she did a, a really uh, uh, quite a, a, a great job managing and leading a team of student researchers based both at William & Mary and Johns Hopkins, as well as some uh, outside the country, and the work required students to gather data on coal-fired power plants globally, um, with specific focus on China, India, and the U.S. Um, Emily uh, managed this multilingual, multinational team based in multiple time zones to coordinate the coding, oversee data quality, and keep pace of the work. Um, she was already working across national and cultural boundaries in an effort to bring understanding uh, for some of the world's most pressing problems. Um, she also took my global environmental governance uh, course and continued to work on research projects for me and for others. Rather than belabor those points, I can ensure you it would only entail more anecdotes of excellent work in the classroom and research. Um, I instead will uh, finish up with a uh, focus on her independent research that she's been conducting this past semester. Her interest in global problems and diplomacy led her to look at Cuba's use of medical diplomacy, in particular by comparing Cuba's ascending of doctors abroad and the types of aid that comes with it to other large donors like the U.S. and China. Cuba obviously has a long history of utilizing its well-developed medical education system and oversupply of medical professionals to both provide aid to those in need in developing countries, but also to gain diplomatic standing and influence. Emmeline's comparing Cuba Cuba's work during the most recent Ebola outbreak and the spread of COVID-19 in Africa to other uh, uh, medical aid uh, from global donors is both timely and important. Uh, Emmeline, I believe, hopes to join the State Department uh, uh, sometime in the future, so she sort of meets all of the expectations of the award, and I'm really excited uh, that she was chosen uh, as this year's uh, Koenig Nemo uh, Award recipient. The final award is for the best honors thesis in international relations. This year, this award goes to John Kaner. Professor Marcus Holmes, who served on John's thesis committee, will speak about his work, which is entitled The New Idealism in International Relations, a Hegelian Theory of the International System. Hello, my name is Marcus Holmes and I'm Associate Professor of Government at William & Mary. It's my pleasure to award John Kaner the best honors thesis in international relations. I served on John's thesis committee and got to witness his thesis develop from an initial inkling of an idea last summer to a full-fledged theory of the structure of the international system less than a year later. John's thesis basically seeks to understand some of the core problems that have plagued international relations theory from the very beginning. So for example, how can it be that the structure of the international system is expressed once on the one hand by the agents who create it, states, but also express at the same time by the forces that act upon those agents, like the structure. Or more simply, how can we account for change in the international system? How do we can account for change in the structure of international politics? Now, this is an age-old problem in international relations and really goes back to the beginning, to sort of foundational principles about what international relations is, what the structure of the international system is all about. And in some ways, I think you could argue that there actually might not be a bigger question, that this is it. This is the question for international relations. And John has argued correctly, I think, that it's not sufficiently explained by existing accounts. So we have realism and we have liberalism and we have constructivism. And these approaches have answers to these questions, of course, but they're not without their, their own problems and they, they're not without their own contradictions. So what John tries to do is see if he can resolve some of the contradictions that we see in existing theories. And he does this by turning to Hegel. OK, Hegel's a 19th century philosopher and Hegel offers a, a solution to this problem by reconciling some of these contradictions or what Hegel would term antinomies. Now, what John specifically argues, drawing on Hegel, is that the international system itself is conscious and that the structure of the system is the system's idea of itself. So when that idea changes, it follows that so, too, does the structure of the system. So the structure of the system in a way, the international system itself, is what philosophers will refer to sometimes as an extended mind. And the idea here is that the mind's idea of itself is subject to change through a variety of processes, such as dialectical processes, and that the international system, therefore, is something akin in a way to our own minds and the ideas that we have of, of oneself. 
this is an incredibly bold thesis. This is an incredibly innovative thesis. Uh, arguing that the international system is conscious is obviously a huge step. But in my estimation, John has done this exceedingly well. He's been successful in this and overall has been incredibly compelling in the way that he's written his, his thesis. Uh, and I think if you do read it, you will be convinced of the core argument. And I would say also importantly that some of the core leaders in our field, some of the leading figures have attempted to do what John has done. So John is following in the footsteps of some of the brightest minds in international relations. And as he goes off to uh, pursue his PhD, I have no doubt that he will soon be joining those minds as well. So congrats again to John on writing a wonderful thesis. And also thank you to John for allowing me to be part of the process and getting to see this an inkling of an idea come to full fruition. It is now my great pleasure to present the International Relations graduates of the class of 2021. The International Relations Director of Devising, Catherine Rahman, will be reading the names of the graduates as they cross the stage. No need to celebrate with decorum as your graduate is being recognized, which is perhaps the only benefit of celebrating virtually. Zach Adams. William Amaker. Tasneem the Mina Binte Amin. Samantha Bailey. Magdalena Baranowska. Camila Batris. Frank Benner. Amanda Bernier. Anna Bustani. Abigail Boyce. Madison Brayman. Madeline Brown. Emma Burley. Ella Kane. Gabriella Chow. Sky Clark. Colin Cochran. Emma Cod. Alexa Conti.
Megan Coughlin. Matthew Crittenden. John Dominic J.D. Demarillo. Elizabeth DeJager. Ian Doty. Caroline Duckworth. Christina Durham. Anna East. Artemis Fang. Antonia Coyote Farrell. Anna Freire. Victoria Gonzalez. Sion Agos. Gillis Harris. Megan Hogan. Jenna Iskander. Paige Jacobson. John Heiner. Isaiah Kim. Grace Klopp. Elizabeth Kaiken. Hans Peppers the Fourth. Martin Lam the Fourth. Amelia Larson. Charles Lawson.
Rebecca Lowe, Nicholas Mack, Jacob McNabb, Antonio Mara. Elizabeth Miller. Sage Miller. Cassidy Mill. Noel Milinarchik. Bo Narda. Cassie Nestor. Aaron O'Hara. Katja Olcott. Shen Si Pan. Lan Peng. Morgan Pincom. Lincoln Ping. Catherine Pompey Van Meer Devort. Emily Powell. Stephen Presendo. Eliza Quinn. Henry Quinn. Jack Reedman. Andrew Richardson. Sandra Rodriguez. Olivia Roven.
William Ryu. Patrick Salzburg. Monica Sandu. Madeline Shear. Abdurrahim Savim. Philip Shelton. Ching Yu Tao. Mary Catherine Trotto. Stephen Backman. Alexander Bannock. Emmeline Walker. Ryan Weber. Catherine Weinsheimer. Mayhew Young. It is now my honor to wish you all congratulations. I would like to remind you that your faculty would love to celebrate with you live tomorrow in a Zoom room. Um, the information is available here and has been sent to your email. We would really love to see your faces tomorrow. And with that, I will conclude the celebration by saying unequivocally, full-throatedly, that it has been our great honor to be part of your story here at William & Mary. Hark upon the gale.